Hello, guys and girls. I got Apple in the title, not pass aggressive at all. I just asked them to grow up a little bit. Now, a couple days ago, Apple had their worldwide developer stuff, you know, a little conference type deal, and they revealed their new Mac OS, Big Sur, and I got it right here. Now, you might be wondering, Muda, I don't care. Why, why the hell do you, every other Mac channel does it, but here's the twist. I'm not a Mac channel. Now, a while back, I built the Billy Rig, okay? I think some of you, some of you know a lot. I nerded over it. I built the Ultimate Rig. Well, let me tell you, Muda's about to build the Denny Rig, okay? What's the Denny Rig? Probably the Ultimate Workstation. I went full Ryzen. I went, you know, best NVIDIA, best AMD GPUs in class. I went it all the way. I went, I, I stuffed all the bad boys into one box and called it a day. Now, it's still, it's still in building. I'm still sourcing parts. I'm still getting it set together. What I did over here was set up a little proof of concept. Now, Big Sur over here, it's running at 3.6 gigahertz Intel Core 2 Solo. All right. Uh, graphics, Radeon RX 550, I literally put this card in just so I could get graphics on this virtual machine. 24 gigs of RAM passed through, not the most beefiest of rigs, but I did this just to install the newest Mac OS. To prove to people that you don't need Apple's uh, proprietary systems, their crappy the hardware, to run their excellent software. Now, just to full transparency, if we open up this activity monitor, all right, somewhere at Apple servers, because they're capturing diagnostic data, this is like the greatest fucking deal of it, somewhere at Apple servers, they have a Core 2 Duo, like a two-core processor, registering as a 16-core bad boy. For further sake, let me just open up a terminal real quick, type in HTOP, and show you that, yes, this is in fact a 16 threaded mac os with 24 gigs of ram it's a virtual machine and if i sat you down you would not be able to tell the difference oh a virtual machine you might ask muda oh how can you prove it's a virtual machine for full transparencies i'm going to ssh into the hypervisor the linux uh, os i have on top just to prove to you that i'm actually connected under a virtual machine so let me just do this real quick yes and put in my password so here it is if i just zoom into this section real quick and type in like a neo fetch you'll actually be able to tell that i'm connected to an arch system right over here so this is in fact my overlord system and this is like the the hypervisor this is what's like running to ensure that mac is running underneath it because again this is just a virtual machine and just to just to just to sort of flex on just to sort of flex on nerds i'm going to update the actual linux system uh, underneath uh, this, uh, this whole, this whole like VM. So I'm actually updating my main computer through the virtual machine. Kind of, kind of interesting. I know it doesn't excite you too much, but it is what it is. If I Neo fetch on the Mac, it'll actually register as completely unknown. <laughs> so yeah, just, just to, just again, to prove that this is in fact a full on Hackintosh. Now, with all the new technologies that have come out with Hackintosh communities, the Hackintosh people are like the ultimate Mac people because they're people that have not purchased a Mac, but they care more about Mac than the people who have just bought a Mac themselves, if that makes any sense. And these guys have come up with technologies like OpenCore, which absolutely is amazing because it allows you to do stuff like this and basically uh and, and then also the uh qemu kvm linux community which actually allows you to emulate actual like uh full-on computers just like this so it looks like you're running it on an actual bare metal computer but it's again it's just a virtual machine now, this isn't the only reason I'm making the video. If we go to apple.com, the reason I wanted to do it, and we can talk about Apple's crappy pricing all we wanted, but if you go to the Mac side, and why I prompted to make this video is if you go to the Mac Pro, like we're talking full on Mac Pro, we're gonna get the full daddy experience, buy this right now, I'm gonna just gonna price one out for you. So if we go to the Mac Pro, and I guess this is the rack, which is immediately like a grand extra, they're selling you a 28 core intel xeon w which is 48 threads for like eight seven grand seven thousand us dollars okay already we have racked up thirteen thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars to give you a comparison to this situation this is the this is what the uh this is what the dennis computer is going to have in it this is 5,399 Canadian dollars, which is like 3,999. So we're already less than half of whatever Apple was trying to pitch me. 
And this is 64 cores, 128 threads, already outclassing this Intel Xeon W, even in clock speed, and I'm pretty sure many other things right there and then. So already, you beat Apple on the CPU front. Now, for most people who are buying a Mac Pro, they're probably doing one of two things, either programming applications, compiling applications, or video editing, like me. The thing is, you need the best CPUs in class if you want to do either of those things, and Apple is selling a Pro product without it at all it would be fine if they were selling the best of the best but clearly they are not selling the best of the best in their highest end part in their highest end unit and that's already 13 that's almost 14 grand once you add the tax actually, actually over 14 grand when you add the taxes it's kind of wild now the memory which is the only saving grace i think 1.5 terabytes i think the twenty five thousand dollar sum makes sense it's fine it that's actually that's actually i think that's proper pricing they're giving that's the only saving grace then they're giving you radeon cards now these are actually pretty decent cards i believe it's like two vega 64 gpus that are like just like combined together like fused into one but bear with me for one second okay that jacks up the price 10 grand if you get two of those which are basically four gpus each when you really think about it again Four graphic cards for $10,800? Are you serious? What the fuck? Now, I wanted to put in some NVIDIA cards because using Adobe Premiere, you're finally able to use GPUs uh, to actually render videos and do all the encoding stuff while you're working on projects. The problem is, all right, I'm not here to dog on AMD for any instance. AMD's great. I think AMD graphic cards are fine for people. I like NVIDIA. I like NVIDIA from a creative perspective, but when I'm trying to use this Mac, guess what? NVIDIA doesn't work. Do you want to know why NVIDIA doesn't work? No real reason. Apple just doesn't get along with them. So since 2017, 2018, ever since they entered like Mac OS Mojave or something, they just completely got rid of NVIDIA graphic cards. So now you're stuck with AMD stuff. Now, for full context, this is a pro product that isn't giving you the choice between one of the two graphic card manufacturers. Now, granted, the GPU that they've come up with is sort of like an Apple deal. Like, they've also contributed a fair bit to research and developing this. But, at the same time, if you were to buy those graphic card enclosures, which, you know, Mac supports pretty well, you only have one brand of GPU to pick from. Because, as far as I know, you can't even use NVIDIA GPUs if you were to go and buy a GPU enclosure, let alone stick it right into the system. This is just one of the many things. And then they're selling you eight terabyte SSDs for $2,600. I mean, Jesus Christ, that's, that's, that's pretty goddamn overkill. You're at, you're sitting at 53,899 US dollars for your shiny new Mac Pro rack, which we have already proven, okay, cannot have the highest end components when you think about it. It can't. The CPU is already outdated compared to AMD. And the only reason they do that is I'm pretty sure Apple and Intel have a deal. So until that deal is up, they're stuck in a shitty marriage. And the thing is, Apple's going to come up with their own tech later on where they're going to release their ARM processors on their actual systems. Maybe for the MacBook Airs, like the laptops, that makes sense. But I don't see how they're going to do that for pro products. Now, even beyond all of that, when you get out of this whole situation. Okay. 53 grand? 53 grand, Muda? That's like a fucking BMW that they're selling you for, okay? So, let me tell you this much. It better be the goddamn greatest product ever imaginable if it's doing that. Which, to be fair, it doesn't do it. <laughs> We've already proven you can get better for cheaper. Building a PC at this point is almost like the greatest thing to do in comparison to purchasing a Mac product. And this is sort of the last bit of the video. I wouldn't make this if I didn't like Mac. I actually like Mac OS a lot, believe it or not. I really have been using Mac OS for almost three months now, and I've been editing videos under it, and I've just had a new love for it. It's a great operating system. Unfortunately, it's marred by Apple's terrible practices. Now, again, I'm making this video to sort of prove a point. I have just installed their latest operating system. 100% feature complete. It works just like a Mac, if anything. It runs like a Mac. It talks like a Mac. It acts as smooth as a Mac would, except with better specs in general. Now, with all of that said, 
okay? All of it said, I've already proven that you can run their operating system on regular PCs. Yes, this is running through virtualization, which I believe is the better way to hack and toss your computer over just running it natively. This is a company that is selling a professional product, okay? A professional product, meaning the people that are going to buy this, okay? The people that would buy this are people that are masters of their craft, they're experts, they want the best of the best so they can save their time while spending, you know, an exorbitant amount of money so they can do the best thing possible. Now, here's the thing. If you like Mac OS, you're buying into a great operating system, but you're buying into terrible design, you're buying into outdated specifications. Now, to just summarize this whole thing so far, I like Mac OS, that's true. But when you're selling a professional product, Apple, it's time to grow up and realize that most of the audience are mature adults that probably want the best of the best. Now, I think when you do like a cost check for all the parts involved over here, I think it's actually not too terribly bad. But I've kind of proven to you as I'm building the Denny rig that this is not the hardest thing to do. I am running Mac under virtualization. I am already running this under so many hoops and hurdles, but it's easy to run it. This is probably the best way to Hackintosh. It runs like a regular Mac anyways, which again begs the question, Apple. All right, if you're going to sell professional grade stuff for people that are programming, for people that are editing movies, videos, whatever they want to call it, creative individuals, they need the best of the best. We have already seen that the best of the best can be acquired for a fraction of the cost. And honestly, it does a far better job. Like I said in my last video when I built the Billy Rig with my whole Mac in it already, Apple has a great operating system. Maybe the biggest hindrance is Apple themselves. They don't care about making Mac. Apple's primary revenue comes from services and selling iPhones and iPads. And that's where the real innovation is. You know, I don't like to shit on iPhones too much because iPhones are actually fairly decent. If you look at the engineering for them, there's actually a lot of stuff that blows away Android stuff right now. But if you look at the Mac side of stuff, they lag so far behind. Like we're talking so far behind from a hardware perspective that anybody could build a better Mac at this point for again, a fraction of the cost. And with the new technologies that the third party communities are coming up with, it's gotten easier year after year to build your own Mac. You know, it got to a situation where people are like, man, I'm gonna build a PC, I'm gonna build this, that. At this point, I'm just gonna keep building more Macs. And while I like the software, I made this video because goddamn does Apple drive me insane with that fucking hardware. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahara. If you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am.